Where were you born, Roy? Arborfield, Saskatchewan. Uh, actually, I was born on a, a homestead oh. east of there, and uh, I don't, the only thing which is on my birth certificate is the legal description of the homestead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was applying for my uh, uh, green card into the States, uh, it was pretty funny because the U.S. Immigration Department, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you go through FBI, you know, checks and everything else to, mm -hmm. to get that. And I gave him my uh, legal description hmm. of my birth certificate because that's, you know, that's what he wanted me. Mm -hmm. And this elderly gentleman that was looking after me, he says, where the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was uh, an interesting thing. 1933. 1933. Yeah, and uh, like my older brother, we were delivered by my dad. Wow. Because we were miles away from mm -hmm. any hospital or doctors. Yeah, that sounds like a German name. No, actually it's Welsh oh. and English. Oh. And my mother was Irish, mm -hmm. so uh, like uh, kind of mongrels. <laughs> my, da my dad says, with that heritage, we could start a fight in an empty bar, you know, because they <laughs> they were always into it, the Irish and the English and the Welsh. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, it is uh, it's an old name hmm. in Wales, but mm -hmm. uh, okay. not a common. Okay, great. Um, so how did you start out playing music, Roy? In, um... My, uh, uh, in 19, uh, 1939, my uncle, who was a, a bachelor mm -hmm. and trapper type, mm -hmm. lived in uh, fairly close to us. Mm -hmm. He enlisted in the Navy, and uh, he had a number of instruments mm -hmm. that he didn't want to leave in his trapper's cabin, so he brought them over to our old place and uh, left him and he had been showing me a uh, few scales and mm -hmm. things like that on fiddle or on fiddle and banjo mm -hmm. and uh, he also had mandolin and guitar mm -hmm. and accordion but um, yeah he uh, helped me I was uh, I was six at, uh, mm -hmm. at that time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, um, how did you get into music? Um, what was your first sort of uh, musical endeavor in terms of playing with other people? Um, well, there were some people that lived in that district mm -hmm. that uh, had instruments, and uh, I used to sit in with them at school dances and mm -hmm. things like that. Right. That was... Uh, and then we moved from uh, Saskatchewan mm -hmm. out to the Lower Mainland in, right. in 19, I think it was 1946, mm -hmm. or the spring, uh, yeah, it was 40, 46. Mm -hmm. And uh, we traveled out there, we worked our way out pretty well mm -hmm. on, on ranches in uh, Montana, and then a bit in Washington, ended up in uh, Langley. Oh, that's where I live, Langley. Do you? Yeah. Well, need to. Where, in, where in Langley did you live? I didn't. Uh, actually, there was a um, a place uh, where my older brother, Ted, went to work. It was Cartwright's. Mm -hmm. Anchor Down Ranch was the name of it. Oh. And uh, it was an acre, acreage. Uh, I don't know how big it was. Mm -hmm. But it was... Uh, just outside, I think it was east of Langley, mm -hmm. and uh, he worked there, mm -hmm. and then uh, we bought a place at Wally, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then I uh, went to school at Queen Elizabeth High School. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay, and then um, I know at some point you hooked up with the Fraser River Boys. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, before that, Tom, yeah. I was, uh, let's see, I met Mark Walt. I was playing for a, 
a box social, and he happened to be there. Mm-hmm. Mark uh, was the accordion player From and the uh, pals, right? arranger. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he said, come on down to the station. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I did, and uh, that would have been in 47. And which station would that have been? CKNW in New Westminster. Oh, right. Yeah, and uh, uh, there was... Uh, the pals of that, right about that time, or just prior to that, they'd got together. Mike Furby and Mark, mm-hmm. who known each other from uh, Saskatchewan. Jack was from uh, Prince Rupert, Jack mm-hmm. Jensen. Mm-hmm. And uh, then uh, I was uh, guesting on uh, uh, Bill Ray's Roundup. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the fellas went, the pals went on tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was with Will Carter, mm-hmm. and uh, they had a steel player by the name of Lance Straw. Mm. Uh, and when you were guesting, pardon me, sorry, when you were guesting on that on the Bill Ray's uh, roundup, was that mm-hmm. on fiddle? Yes, fiddle. Yeah, uh, I, all of that was on fiddle. So by by that time, you'd pretty much gone exclusively to fiddle, had you? Or uh, no, I was uh, playing mandolin mm. and guitar and bass okay. as well but uh, mostly just about all fiddle mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and so would that have been with a group of other like studio musicians or how would that how would how would you have um, performed on, on the radio show that was with the rhythm pals oh with the rhythm pals yeah mm. the uh, um the Fraser River Boys, when when the pals went on tour, mm-hmm. uh, the station suggested that I get together uh, and form a band. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, there was Len Lemieux, who later I changed his name to Len Ryder. Right, right. And uh, Walter Sunquest, the Beckett brothers, who I'd, I'd run into, mm-hmm. Doug and Ron Beckett, mm-hmm. and my brother Jack. Mm-hmm. Who played bass, and uh, that—that's how the uh, Fraser River Boys were mm-hmm. formed. And that was around what 1950, was it? No, it was before that. It would oh. have been. Uh, uh, gosh, Tom, I think it was 49. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been 49. Right. Okay. I see 40, Tom, I think it was 48. 48. Mm-hmm. Yeah, late 48. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'll just come back to the the Fraser River Boys in a sec, but did mm-hmm. you actually do did you actually do broadcasting on CKNW or was it uh, strictly as a musician? You mean as an announcer? Yeah. Uh, no. So okay, so it was it was just playing, it wasn't broadcasting. Like you weren't an, an announcer or anything. No, I was not an announcer. I right. was uh, uh, uh-huh. a fiddle player, right. a lowly fiddle player. <laughs> a lowly fiddle player. <laughs> um, and do you do you remember other musicians who also broadcast on that station with you, or, or around the same time? Like, were there other aside from the Rhythm Pals you mentioned? Um, well, there was Andy Fraser. Yeah. Uh, he had a band. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't remember the name of Andy's band. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were uh, Jimmy Morris, of course. Jimmy Morris? Yes. Oh. Jimmy uh, had an incredible uh, repertoire of songs. Hmm. He knew hundreds and hundreds of songs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then Evan Kemp. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, was sorry. Was Jimmy Morris a singer? What did he? What did he do? Yeah, he was a singer, uh-huh. a guitar player. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat Jarrell right. played steel, right? And Pat worked with the pals on the uh, uh, CBC show called The Burns Chuck Wagon, right? And um, yeah, I, I, met, I met Pat. He was part of our society for a while, actually, before he passed away. When did he die, Tom? Um, if you don't mind me asking yeah, no, you no. a question. No, no. Um, it was a, probably around six, five, six years ago. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was, um, he was the one on the board of our, our society for quite a while. Um, 
he actually performed for a while too, but I didn't, I don't think I ever saw him actually perform. I, I was in it and out of it and then back in it again. I'm back in it again now, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he was, um, yeah, I don't have the date. Um, yeah. It's, well, that's good. Anyway, but uh, yeah. So, so you mentioned some of these, do you remember the Rogers brothers, Frankie and uh, Hank? Hank and Frank uh, located out in, uh, Let's see. When I was doing some stuff around the coast with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, Fraser River Boys. Then I went on tour mm-hmm. on a couple of tours out there with uh, um, Buddy Reynolds, mm-hmm. who was who was from uh, the Okanagan, mm-hmm. and uh, that would have been in nineteen. 19- 50 or 51 mm-hmm. and uh, we uh, we had a, a small group that toured in the interior up to Rupert and back with Buddy Buddy Reynolds no uh, this was Rudy Durton my brother Jack and m- myself oh and what did you go by at that time it was called the Saddle Pals oh I've heard and, that mm-hmm. yeah and uh, we we uh, we're trying to survive. <laughs> so was that before, or that would have, no, that would have been after the Fraser River Brothers, or the Fraser yeah, River, Fraser River Boys? River yeah. Boys, I mean, sorry. Yeah, that was uh, Ron and uh, Doug. Uh, they went out on Ron. I think Ron become a minister. I lost track of uh, of what happened to him. Ron from the Saddle Pals? Uh No, Ron. Uh, Ron Beckett. Oh. Uh, the other uh, oh, one of the Beckham was, brothers, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and and, uh, and so so how long did the Fraser River Brothers perform? You say it started around late nineteen forty eight till. Um. Uh, well, we won the Morris. Uh, pardon me. We won the Horse Height uh, contest in. I guess it would have been nineteen fifty. Horse uh, Horse Height. Yeah, horse height. Uh, that was a network show out of uh, out of the states, and they ran a uh, international competition. The Vancouver Sun did mm-hmm. quite a write up on us. No, oh. and uh, there was a picture of the fellas oh, and myself. Look, have and to look that up. And that was in 1950. I think so. Then we also were in the. Uh, uh, Pacific National Exhibition. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was, I think, that was 1952 or 51. Uh, they they held a big uh, Western music mm-hmm. um, competition mm-hmm. at the PNE. Mm-hmm. So the the award you said that you won horse. How do you spell horse? Is like horse hide, like the hide of a horse. No height. It's um, oh, I would have to look it up, Tom, to be sure. Okay. Uh, it had an unusual spelling. Oh, okay. I'd have to look at an old scrapbook or something. Yeah. To, that, actually, that name rings a bell. I think I've seen it yeah. on somewhere. But, um, yeah, they were uh, Anyway, there were too many. We we went there for the Pacific area, Pacific mm-hmm. Northwest, mm-hmm. and there were too many in our group mm-hmm. <laughs> to go down and compete mm-hmm. in California. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, pretty disappointing. The, uh, the thing wasn't that, you know... Mm-hmm. Well supported as far as mm-hmm. getting us down there. So, right. that. and and uh, what type of, what type of music did you play in the Fraser River uh, Boys? Was was it a, a mix of styles or what? What was it? It was it was a type of uh, swing, a lot of standards, mm-hmm. um, old time stuff because we had accordion. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, pretty. And you know, hold down stuff. Mm-hmm. You listen to quite a bit of Spade Cooney stuff. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so that that had an influence on the uh, Tex Williams band, right. his big band, the Caravan. Mm-hmm. And I listened to uh, quite a bit of um, the Sons of the Pioneers mm-hmm. music, and I got to know you far mm-hmm. when I was really young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And did the Fraser River Brothers or Boys ever record? No. No. Uh, if there are any recordings around, I'm not aware of it. Okay. 
there could be, but uh, from the old radio shows. But mm. we used to work with, uh, at that time, it was fairly limited recording mm -hmm. equipment, just mm -hmm. the web core recorders, which was a wire mm -hmm. type of recorder. Mm -hmm. uh, Aragon Recording. Right. I did some over there with uh, Mike Furby oh, yeah. and uh, some other fellows that were around Panko. Oh, excuse mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So you played on some other people's uh, recordings? Yeah. Um, we did... Uh, it was a fellow by the name Alberta Slim. Right. That used to... Uh, he had some deal with RCA. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would have been in 50 or 51. And so you played some uh, fiddle on Yeah, his, I played fiddle on some on his recordings? At yeah, a, on his recordings. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Al Roosh, I think was the fellow's name that time, owned Aragon. Right. And did you record with other um, other uh, musicians, or other bands at Aragon? Or? Uh, no, that was pretty well it for uh -huh. recording out there. Right. Um, I think we did a session with uh, Buddy Reynolds out of Aragon, too, mm -hmm. for uh, BMI were involved in that one. Mm -hmm. I don't know whatever happened to that mm -hmm. session. Right. But uh, then uh, in 1952, I got a call from... Uh, I'd been doing a little bit of work for CBC mm -hmm. uh, with various guys, and... Uh, um, I got a call out of Calgary mm -hmm. to see if I wanted to join Vic Siebert in the sense of the saddle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, I was with that group for seven years. Oh, okay. And uh, we were doing network radio. Then uh, when they opened the station, the TV station in Winnipeg, they moved us there. We were doing the... Uh, uh, Saddle Songs, which was uh, uh, a network television. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's still some of that stuff floating around uh -huh. and that from the network. With, this is with Vic Siebert's band? Yeah, Sons of the Saddle. Sons of, Sons of the Saddle? Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, um, when you were here um, in the early 50s uh, with the Fraser River Boys, were you a full-time musician at that point, and what, what kind of gigs did you play? What kind of circuit was there, or, or what kind of venues did you play in at that time? Uh, mostly dances. Uh, there wasn't, and some shows. Mm -hmm. We did stuff with uh, Wilf Carter mm -hmm. when he was out there. Um, do you mostly, uh, pardon me? Do you remember the names of any of the dance halls you played at? <laughs> Sullivan uh, Sullivan Hall. Oh yeah, that's still there. No kidding. Yes, that's in. Um, it's either in. I think it's in Surrey. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Then uh, let's see the Legion in New Westminster. Mm -hmm. We played there quite a bit. Right. And uh, let me think of some of the other places. There was another dance hall in New West too. Um, I want to say the Hollywood Bowl, but that doesn't, hmm. that might not be the right name, mm -hmm. uh, up on the hill in New West. Mm -hmm. um, some stuff around uh, Langley and Clovedale, mm -hmm. you know, various, they were ca casual type gigs. Right. And were you able to support yourself as a musician back then? <laughs> Living at home, we did. <laughs> we did. But uh, it was... You know, like, this, there wasn't uh, a big demand. Right. I was very happy when I got the call from CBC because it right. was a fixed income and, and uh, you know. Right. So at, uh, at that point with the Fraser River Boys, you you were still pretty young. You were only, you weren't even 20 probably yet. So oh, no, were, I was, uh, so you I think when I left, I would have been uh, 18 or so mm -hmm. to come over to... Uh, to Calgary. Right. So, so sorry, the CBC thing, the invite was, um, was that, to, that was to play with Vic Siebert? Yes, it was, yeah. yeah. Vic had a, 
uh, contract, and I was part of it with uh, CBC. They moved oh. us from, from Calgary to Winnipeg. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was in 1955. And we worked out of Winnipeg. Hmm. And uh, I wanted to, to come back to Calgary. Mm-hmm. They wanted to go east. Mm-hmm. And uh, the contract uh, that we had with CBC ended mm-hmm. in uh, 57 or 58. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would have been 58, I guess. Mm-hmm. And um, they went east and I came west. Right. To Calgary. Right. So in 58, you came back to Calgary. I think it was 58. Yeah. yeah. And um, and so the contract, why would, why would CBC have had a contract? Was it for radio shows or what? And radio and television. And television. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we were working both uh, hmm. uh, Dominion Network, which was the old, one of the old uh, CBC networks. Mm-hmm. And then CBC proper, which was uh, TransCanada mm-hmm. Network, right. and CBC Television. Right. And our uh, announcer for our Saddle Songs, which was our television show, was Lloyd Robertson. Lloyd Robertson. Yeah. Right. The broadcaster, the news broadcaster. Yeah, he right. was with CBC. Uh-huh. He moved east and then uh, left CBC, mm-hmm. went to... Uh, CTV, and then he was the uh, head of uh, CTV News for mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you remember a band from Alberta called the Alberta Ranch Boys? Yeah, they were uh, out of Lethbridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were, I think they had wound up uh, by the time they were going in the 40s. Mm-hmm. And I was pretty well just getting started. Right. But uh, I have the recollection of the band. They had a nice little band. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I think, I believe all the people have passed away. Uh, I've got something uh, here on them. Mm-hmm. If, uh, oh. if you have a second, I'll just dig sure. it out. Yep. Mm-hmm. They... Uh, they were from uh, pretty well all from southern Alberta, mm-hmm. and they went, they moved uh, out to the coast for a while. Oh, did they? Yeah, they were doing some work uh, out around uh, Vancouver. Mm-hmm. they were, uh, I can give you the names of the guys if you want them. Sure. Or do you want a tip? Yeah, if you if you have them, yeah. Yeah, Lou Gonzi. G O N Z Y. Mm-hmm. Curly Gerlock. C U R L Y. G U R L O C. And he played banjo and bass fiddle. Mm-hmm. You know, Lou played uh, uh, sax, bass fiddle, violin, and piano. Mm-hmm. Joe Horhauser. H O R H O Z E R. He played accordion. Mm-hmm. And uh, Remo Basida, mm-hmm. R E M O B A C E T A. And uh, he played fiddle and drums. Mm-hmm. And Buck Waslovich, W A S O V I T C H. He was a guitar player and vocal. Mm-hmm. And that was the Alberta Ranch Boys. Right. Did you ever see them before? Uh, no. Mm-hmm. I met some of the guys, and mm-hmm. after I, after I uh, come back from the Sons of the Pioneers, mm-hmm. uh, I'm just trying to remember. I think it was Remo phoned me. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was Remo called me and mm-hmm. said to say hello. And mm-hmm. We were living in the Crowsness Pass, mm-hmm. and he was over in Lethbridge. Okay, and then the sons of of the Sad- Vic Siebert and the sons of the saddle, right? That's, Correct. That's the yeah, name. they were they kind of like um, a cowboy vocal harmony group, or yes, uh, and uh, we also did a lot of instrumental, uh-huh. uh, you know, which was um, somewhat uh, 
Well, actually, we played pretty well everything good with that group. They were, Johnny Allen played Steel. Mm-hmm. He'd, he'd been with uh, King Ganim in the Sons mm-hmm. of the West out mm-hmm. of Edmonton. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, good musicians and singers, mm-hmm. just really good. I did some of the arranging, mm-hmm. both uh, vocal and uh, uh, instrumental stuff we did. Right. Okay. Um, what um, what is the musical achievement that you're most proud of, Roy? Oh gosh. Or a couple of them. Uh, I guess. Well, we worked on Grand Ole Opry with the Sons of Pioneers and mm. quite a few major television shows in the states. Mm-hmm. And uh, she actually performed on, at the Grand Ole Opry. Oh yeah, in the old the old Ryman. No, they just moved. This oh. was about twenty. Let's so the mid seventies, probably. No, actually, it was in the nineties. Nineties. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, when we we did primetime country and mm-hmm. quite a few of those uh, national shows, um, I think uh, I got uh, uh, a pretty nice statue, mm-hmm. a bronze uh, from the uh, uh, the National Cowboy uh, Hall of Fame mm-hmm. for the work I did on uh, producing and playing on the Sons of the Pioneers mm-hmm. uh, music mm-hmm. and uh, I'm up for a Lifetime Achievement Award oh. in about two months from the uh, Canadian Grand Masters Fiddle oh. group. Congratulations. Wow. Pardon me? Congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, is and that, that's a Canadian uh, award, is it? At Grand Masters, yeah. Grand Masters. Yeah, and uh, well, there was, uh, we had a lot of awards during the uh, over the years from various things. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, to pick one out, it's pretty hard, mm-hmm. you know, because there were, mm-hmm. there were a lot of good people mm-hmm. and some not so good. <laughs> like, like there is. Like life. And, and like, yeah, I'm sure you've been down that road. Yeah. Anyway, but um, no, uh, for the most part, there. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. yeah. So I used to, I used to have a, a contact in Nashville that I'd worked with uh, years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His name is Grandpa Jones. Oh, yeah, he, and uh, yeah, wasn't he was on the Hee Haw show, wasn't he? Yeah, and on the Opry. Opry. Yeah, yeah. he'd been around forever, and uh, whenever uh, I was putting some deal together with people I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Grandpa knew everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a wonderful old guy, mm-hmm. and as straight as they come. Yeah. And uh, I used to phone him up and I said, what about such and such? Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and what about so-and-so? He's a turd. <laughs> <laughs> that so man, you, you believe me, if, goods from him. Yeah, if, he, <laughs> if he told you he was, <laughs> well, you funny. could take it to the bank because yeah. you knew what he was going to tell you was, yeah. you know, yeah. the way it was. Crazy. Anyway, you don't have to use that word if you don't want to. No. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A wonderful old guy. Yeah. Um, I just realized now, as far as your history, I think um, you mentioned uh, Vic Siebert ending the contract in 1958. You came back west. <clears throat> and then, mm-hmm. then did you start with the Sons of the Pioneers then, or were you still were you in other bands after? after no, 15? I formed my own band back in Calgary, uh-huh. and um, worked on television mm-hmm. with uh, what used to be uh, it's now Global, mm-hmm. but uh, as it went through a number of uh, changes of ownership, mm-hmm. uh, it was CHCT TV at that time in Calgary. Mm-hmm. Um, worked for. Oh, quite a few years on different series. Mm-hmm. As and, it, what were you doing? What was your role on those? Uh, producing and playing, oh, okay. but playing and organizing the talent for that. I got quite involved with uh, putting together shows for the Stampede. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, for quite a number of years, about I guess about thirty odd years. So, Even when I was in the states, I was. Well, 
putting together shows up in Calgary. So getting the talent, the uh, the um, the music uh, musicians and bands uh, organized for that that part of yeah, the, well, yeah, that's right. Putting uh, mostly Stampede, mm-hmm. Calgary Stampede yeah. stuff. So you mentioned in Calgary, you started your own band. What was that band? Uh, Roy Warhurston's Western Swing Band. Roy Warhurst. And did you do any recordings? Yeah, we did. Uh, I think two albums with. Uh, uh, we did one for London. Mm-hmm. That, uh, I can't remember. We did quite a bit of recording backing up, you know, various other people and uh, Opry people that were coming through. We'd open for them, type mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was... It was reasonably successful. Mm-hmm. I uh, I had another job just to make sure, you know, mm-hmm. what the music business is like. <laughs> so I got involved in uh, printing, mm. and in '64 uh, I bought a, a small printing plant, mm-hmm. and uh, was in that for quite a number of years. Mm-hmm. Then sold it. Then. Uh, we moved, we bought a, a half section up at Sandry. Oh, that's right. Um, we bought a half section of land oh, okay. up at Sandry, Alberta, mm-hmm. which is a uh, ranching and oil industry area of Alberta. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I bought Mountain Air Lodge, which was a, um, a lodge uh, just... Uh, on the edge of the Banff National Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was in 1970, 72. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had, plus a real estate company mm-hmm. and so, insurance company so in Sandry. Something to fall back in case the music business didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> there were times that, in the, and I was still playing. <clears throat> A fair amount of music. Mm -hmm. Uh, Didn't have a band at that time, but I was working. uh, I had worked with, uh, uh, I had an MCA and uh, Capital recording project that that I'd done in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was released over in uh, uh, Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And I was back and forth over there quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And that would have been when? Uh, the early 70s. Mm-hmm. And then um, between that and, and playing most of, you know, most of the major television shows as a guest, mm-hmm. you know, and doing quite a work with, uh, quite a bit of work with the uh, uh, Alberta government as to tourist promotion, playing at various things. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the states and also in Canada. What what TV shows would you have played on? Um, well, I worked with the Irish Rovers. They mm-hmm. had a show. As a matter of fact, yeah. it was done on Vancouver. I remember that. Yeah. Um, the Entertainers, which was a CBC production mm-hmm. out of uh, Winnipeg, uh, Red River Jamboree, mm-hmm. uh, Country Time out of Halifax. Mm-hmm. The Tommy Hunter Show. I was going to ask you about the Tommy Hunter Show. So you did that. Yeah. Played on yeah. That. Yeah. Was that was that as a as a guest fiddler to just where you'd come on and and play? Or yeah. Was it part of a group? No, it was my own feature thing. Fiddler. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And when did you start with the Sons of the Pioneers? And, and what was your role? What did you first start doing with them? Were you actually playing fiddle with them, or? Uh, we were on tour, the uh, Sons of the Saddle, in 1954, uh, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. We went on tour with the Sons of the Pioneers mm-hmm. through Canada. And I'd met Yui Farr. The, the Pioneers played Vancouver mm-hmm. in the late 40s. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met Yui Farr, the fiddle player there. Mm-hmm. And that was my first contact with him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, Bob, that was the old group with Bob Nolan and uh, Lloyd Perryman. And, mm-hmm. um, 
up, then I met up with them. Oh, we needed um, we needed um, a group. I was on the uh, uh, Stampede Committee, and uh, I contact the uh, pioneers mm-hmm. to do a, a, a show daily at the uh, Stampede mm-hmm. in 1958. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fellows... There were still a couple of the original guys. Mm-hmm. Not the very original guys, but guys that had replaced that I'd met. Mm-hmm. And uh, going back a little bit before that, in 1964, Lloyd Perryman, who was the leader of the Pioneers, mm-hmm. uh, contacted me uh, because Louis, uh, Huey Farr, who was the fiddle player, was leaving. Mm-hmm. And they asked me uh, oh, if, I'd, if I'd join. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. I didn't go with them at that time because had a young family, and I knew that uh, I just didn't want to end up over in Vietnam or somewhere mm-hmm. <laughs> because uh, I would have been drafted. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, so uh, I stayed uh, in Canada. Then um, in 1950, and pardon me, 1968, mm-hmm. they asked me to uh, go with them again, and I didn't go at that time. But they asked me to uh, produce... Mm-hmm. An album for him right. in the in the states mm-hmm. in Tucson. Mm-hmm. So I went uh, down on uh, in the winter time and worked on that project for him. We finished that up. Then uh, one of the fellows left, uh, and they needed a replacement. That would have been in the early nineties. So um, I said okay and. So Lynn and I uh, moved down to Tucson, mm-hmm. and uh, then from and I left the group in 1996. Mm-hmm. But during that time, we worked a lot with well uh, a lot of tours, and uh, we worked in Tucson and in Branson, Missouri. Mm-hmm. So and, uh, so in '68, you you um, went down there to produce their album. And right. Then, and then you started playing with them as well after that? Um, about two years after that. Two years after that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it was, it would have been three years, I think. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Then, uh, sometime around 1971 or somewhere, somewhere around there. No, uh, 90, 91. Uh, see, uh, I was with them from uh, 91 to 96. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned uh, so w- when you did the uh, our producer album and that was in 1968, but you didn't play with no them f- uh, until that was in 19, 1988. I worked on oh that on you the produced album. their album. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. And when w- was that your start in terms of producing? Because I know you did some producing for other artists as well. Was that um, uh, did, no? How I'd... did you get your start in in producing? <laughs> I don't know though. It's just one of those things I was I like doing and mm-hmm. and uh, you know, got called to do it for various people mm-hmm. and just uh I was playing a lot too, so mm-hmm. was, who who did you um uh, produce for? <laughs> I don't know. There were guys and girls that were a bunch asked of me to work on Oh stuff. Ian Tyson, that was the name I was looking for. Did you work with him? Yeah, I worked on uh, cowboyography. Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't produce that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know who did, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was a pretty neat project. It uh, it went platinum, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess yeah, it's uh, uh, some of the songs on that, and some of the cuts were pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Pretty decent cuts. What, so, what was your role on that? You didn't produce, but what did you? Fiddle player. Oh, you played fiddle. Okay. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the cuts on there, uh, "Summer Wages," uh, Tyson tune, mm-hmm. and that's been recorded by a lot of different people. But uh, it was selected by the Canadian Association of Broadcasters mm-hmm. as the uh, song of the decade. Mm. Yeah, that was. Uh, I got a lot of airtime. 
And it had a a real good feel to it, the way. That was Summer Wages? Yeah. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, that's on Cowboyography. Right. Okay. Um, You worked with uh, Dick Damron? Yeah, Dick and I had worked a lot together over the years on Mm -hmm. shows and dances and. Good guy. Yeah, I'm not familiar with him. What did he play, or what was his? What did he do? He was a singer. Oh, okay. Yeah, male vocalist of the year in uh, in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a country mm-hmm. male vocalist, and uh, Tom. There should be more guys like Dameron mm-hmm. in the in the music business. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> he was a good a good uh, yeah a good guy and a talented writer. Mm. But uh, Dick, if he would have been in uh, the states, mm-hmm. he would have been another Waylon Jennings. Really? You know. Mm. Oh yeah, he and uh, a really good guy. We mm. worked many many jobs together over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and wh- we did an album together. As a matter of fact, oh, which which was uh, you remember the name of that album? Yeah, Northwest Rebellion was the name of the album, mm. and uh, it was it was uh, a pretty decent session. Mm-hmm. The uh, 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 all instrumental, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. and uh, I wish you would have been around because. You could have played steel on yeah. it. Uh, it was one of the. Uh, okay. They wanted to do um, uh, one of the tunes is called Pat's Country, mm-hmm. and uh, a pretty uh, tune I wrote for a movie, a western uh, soundtrack, mm. and uh, and it's still being played a lot. A lot, a lot of uh, young people are playing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, kids, there's a fiddle group out on the coast, as a matter of fact. I think they're from the valley mm-hmm. that uh, recorded it. Oh. But uh, it's funny, when you called, I was just, just going to, uh, they want to play it on the uh, Grand Masters thing uh, when I get the award mm-hmm. up there. And uh, I was just working on that at the time. Mm-hmm. Where, where will that award be um, be given? In Edmonton. In Edmonton. Yeah, in August, the, uh, the Saturday, which is 27th, I think. Wow, yeah, that's, that's August the 27th. Yeah, good for you. Okay. Um, I, so. I, had to, I found some information on the internet on albums that you may have Recorded. One was called Roy Warhurst Country Feeling, The Nashville Sound, 1972. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with uh, Lloyd Green played on that, as a matter of fact. Oh, on Steel? Yeah, Lloyd was on Steel and Charlie Coy and oh. a whole bunch of the guys, Johnny Gimble. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't remember how old it was. Jerry Kerrigan, who was Presley's drummer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I'm a big Robbins piano player. Mm-hmm. They were the A-team in Nashville at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Great players. Yeah. Then uh, your uh, Roundup Time Again slash Darlene's Polka, a seven inch. Was that like a single kind of a thing? Uh, that-, that might have been. Yeah. That was off uh, a London. Yeah, London. Yeah. yeah. London record. Yeah. But uh, that was kind of the television station in, uh, in Calgary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a kind of a neat pro- project. There was uh, I don't know roundup time. Was that Wolf Carter? Or who was that? We did some stuff with Wolf. I don't know. I didn't really see much information on that. I don't remember. There was a, that was a vocal. I do remember that. Mm-hmm. The other guys that there were so many guys. Tom over the years had it. Mm-hmm. It kind of all runs together. Mm-hmm. But uh, Len Ryder, yep. I hear from him every once in a while. Yeah, actually, I, I had a, a bit of contact with him as well. He lives up in Penticton here in BC. Yeah. Um, he goes down to somewhere down south in the winter. But, right. Uh, yeah, he was a steel player, right? I, it's too bad that there wasn't any. I know there were some recordings. 
kicking around, but I'd lost track of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's one thing I'm kind of interested in is finding some of the old recordings as well. And um, oh, yeah? and I don't know if you have any any of the old photos from any of your your bands going back to the Fraser River Boys or you know in the forties oh, yeah. and fifties. I've got quite a bit of stuff kicking around. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Is there any way you could get someone to scan those photos and send them to me? Or? I think they did a, a tribute to me back three years ago. Yeah. And uh, I've got most of that stuff. And getting it to organized, uh, it might be possible to get you a, a raft of that. Because mm -hmm. I, I know we have, um, I think we have a picture of, of you and the Fraser River Boys. We have one photo. And then I, I found an article online uh, from uh, 19, the 1995 -ish, January, February issue of American Cowboy, where there's a little article on the Sons of Pioneers being honored at, at the WMA Association um, oh, did convention. You? Yeah. Back in. Um, That'd be in Tucson, I bet. Uh, or was it in uh, yeah. Austin? No, it was in Tucson, yeah. It says uh, Western Music Association honored the Sons of the Pioneers at its annual convention last November in Tucson. Um, yeah, and you're in the picture there with um, with the gang. <laughs> with, uh, who's in it? Roy Rogers? Uh, I don't know if Roy. Yeah, Roy worked on that one with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, front row: John, John Nally, Sonny Spencer, Gary Lemaster, and Rusty Richards. And then Tom, Tom Nally, uh, uh, Dale Warren, Roy Rogers, Dale, Dale Rogers, uh, Billy Armstrong, yourself, and Luther. Uh, and oh yeah, okay, Luther that was a group, a group shot at the yeah. back or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I seem to remember that. Yeah, so I found that on. Yeah, did you ever run into a guy by the name of Roy Morris, M-O-R-I-C-E? Yeah, he, uh, he he used to play around mm -hmm. your part of the country. He's quite old now, mm -hmm. older than me, and I'm 83 this fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so Roy is, is pushing 90. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he had a band out in the lower mainland. Mm -hmm. Well... I hope I've been of some help. Yeah, yeah. that's been great. Um, actually, do you mind? I just have a couple of quick things. Um, Go ahead. Uh, one was, I found a song online uh, played by a fiddler named Calvin Volrath. Yes. He recorded a song called The Roy War Warhurst Breakdown. It's online, is it? Yeah. Yeah, Calvin's a wonderful player. Yeah, and is, of, is that um, was that written by you or a, a song? No, by tribute? Calvin. He wrote that. Yeah, as a tribute to you, or yes. Oh, nice. I'm gonna have to pay him when I see him. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard? You must have heard it then. Yeah, he sent it to me. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, if you like, uh, I can. If you like, I can send you the link online so you can see it online. I I think I have it on uh, okay. from Calvin. Right. Yeah, but thanks. No, that's uh, that's and, nice of him. And yeah, and then also I noticed uh, again online um, that you were involved with a, a children's show called the Buckshot Show. I uh, I didn't produce it. As a, uh -huh. a friend of mine, Ron Barge, uh -huh. B A R G E. Right. That was. Um, what did it say? How I was connected oh, with it that? It just said. It just said. Um, longest running sh children's TV show and where it mentions you is um, Clyde the Owl manages to confuse what should be a simple song in Talk It Out. Heathcliff and Daphne run out of gas on their way to the party and realize they aren't communicating too well. The clincher is 16 Chickens, one of the most requested songs on the show featuring local <laughs> fiddler Roy War Warhurst. He was my neighbor growing up. Kudos if you know all the lyrics. Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> and there's actually a video of that song as well on YouTube, uh, where I think I think you're playing like in a barn or something in the winter. You can yeah. see your breath while you're. While you're is that you? Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing that with Ron and Jim. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It ran for I don't know how many years. Guessing it would be thirty or forty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, very popular show and a popular person. Lars is a, a good guy, a real role model for mm -hmm. a lot of kids. Yeah. Good. Yeah, neat guy. Good. Okay, well, okay. Uh, nice talk to you, Roy. Have a nice day, and uh, we'll be yeah, in touch soon. We'll, yeah, we'll talk to you. Bye. Okay, thanks. Bye.